We're going to read from the uh, Atra Hasis tonight, all right? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I know the majority of people are never going to read this text. <laughs> so I'm going to read it for you, and you're going to listen. Now, there are some dead spots or some question mark spots where some of the stone was damaged, and um, some of the wording could not be um, deciphered, right? So let's get into this. When the gods, instead of man, when the gods, instead of man, so we're talking about these gods, but notice the gods, even in here, have a lowercase g. Not a capital G for the creator of the universe, a lowercase g. Meaning, man has deified these people, even though these people were not the creators of the universe, but they had advanced knowledge and advanced technology. They did the work and bore the loads. So the gods used to do the work and bore the load. Now think about this for a second. What are they talking about do the work? They're talking about this epic is kind of really beginning when these people came down from heaven to earth and began to turn mud into a kingdom. In the ancient Kemetic uh, text, right? Then the Turu turned mud into a kingdom. These are the same exact people from the land of Kemet. Now, they say when the gods instead of man did the work and bore the loads, the gods load was too great. Now, think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. Why in the world would the creator of the universe need to work and do labor and do hard labor? Why? Why would the God, why would the God of the universe have to bear the load and do labor. The work was too hard. The trouble was too much. Well, think about that. Well, what trouble, what work? If you're God, if you're the creator of the universe, why is the work too hard? Why is the load too hard to bear? The great Anunnaki made the Ejiji carry the workload sevenfold. Now, the Ejiji, you've heard me talk about the Ejiji, right? The Ejiji were these uh working class anunnaki beings and they were really like volunteers when you analyze the text they were not slaves however they were treated they were being treated like slaves they were being treated like lower class citizens and so they were starting to get pissed off because they were given seven times the workload as the other gods and these people are like i said gods with the lowercase g they're just men they're flesh and blood people that put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you and me. So they made him carry the workload sevenfold. I knew their father was king. So I knew was like the head figure, right? A-N-U. I knew went up to the sky and Enlil took the earth for his people. The bolt which bars the sea was assigned to far-sighted Enki. When Anu had gone up to the sky and the gods of the Apsu had gone below, the Anunnaki of the sky made the Ejiji bear the workload. So these people went up into their sky ship. They're just kicking back. They got their feet up. They're relaxed. They're, they're chilling. They said, you guys, you guys do all the work. We're going to sit back and watch from the sky. Just keep laboring. Keep creating this breakaway civilization that we started here. Keep laboring and keep digging these canals and building the buildings and laying down the plumbing and everything else. We're going to watch from the sky. Now, this is this is written before these Anunnaki had um, engaged mankind. Our cousins that were already here on the planet, they weren't homo sapiens sapien like us, but they were a version of us. They weren't engaged by these people yet, though. These people were still doing the work themselves to create their own breakaway civilization, kind of really ignoring us and leaving us alone, believe it or not. So he says, when a new head gone up to the sky and the gods of the Apsu had gone below, the Anunnaki of the sky made the EGG bear the workload. The gods had to dig out canals. Now, why in the world are gods digging out canals? So we're clearly talking about flesh and blood people. We're talking about people that had advanced technology and advanced knowledge. We're not talking about creators of the universe. So he says, the gods had to dig out canals, had to clear channels, the lifelines of the land. I'm talking about farming now. The EGG had to dig out canals, had to clear channels, lifelines of the land. The gods dug out the Tigris River. 
Wow. And then dug out the Euphrates. Then there's some missing pieces of the tablet. It says, in the deep, they set up the Apsu of the land. Inside it raised its top. All of the mountains, they were counting the years of loads. They had been laboring for quite some time, by the way. The Great Marsh, they were counting the years of loads. For 3,600 years, they bore the excess. 3,600 years is one rotation of their home planet around our sun. They call it a shar, according to these Anunnaki people. Hard work, night and day, they groaned and blamed each other. This is how you know they're not real gods. They groaned. They're in pain. These people are hurting. This back-breaking labor going on. They groaned and blamed each other, grumbled over the masses of excavated soil. Let us confront our masters, the Chamberlain, and get him to relieve us of our hard work. Come, let us carry, then it says the Lord, I think it was going to try to say Lord Enki, something to the counselor of the gods, because it's a broken piece of the tablet. The counselor of gods, the warrior from his dwelling, come, let us carry Enlil. Enlil is Yahweh in the modern day Bible. Let me tell you that again. In the modern day Bible, Enlil is Yahweh. He is the God that came back to Eden and noticed that the people had gained some damn sense and realized that they weren't freaking animals and put on clothes and got some knowledge in their freaking head from Enki and he got pissed off about it. Enlil is the one, if you read the Epic of Gilgamesh and a lot of these other ancient tablets that's killing off humans by the thousands and tens of thousands because they're just making too much noise. We're talking about a very evil person, an evil, evil person that ruled over this planet for quite some time. The council of the gods, the warrior from his dwelling. So they said, let's, let's get to Enlil and talk to him. We got to get to the counselor of the gods. This guy's the head man in charge. We need to holler at him and tell him, hey, man. Our backs are breaking here doing this labor. Then Allah made his voice heard. Oh, Allah, you thought that came from the Quran? No, it comes from <laughs> the Sumerian tablets. And spoke of the gods, his brothers. Then there's a gap about eight lines right here. He says, come, let us carry the counselor of gods, the warrior from his dwelling. Come, let us carry Enlil, the counselor of gods, the warrior from his dwelling. Now cry battle. Let us mix fight with battle. The gods listened to his speech, set fire to their tools, put aside their spades for fire, their loads for fire god. They flared up. When they reached the gate of warrior Enlil's dwelling, it was night in the middle watch. So what's happening here? There's a coup going on. There's a coup going on. By Compendium of the Emerald Tablets by Billy Carson. 